Hi, welcome to the video. I'm Kerry and you're on the Crushit Review of Books YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, we're going to do a, a book haul. Now I haven't done one of these for quite a while. I was doing them in, uh, as shorts for a while and I found I was just having to race through things and I was missing things out as I was doing it. Now, I haven't done a, a full length uh, book haul or acquisitions as I used to call it for about a year I think. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to go pick up a bunch of books that have come my way in the last few couple of months and um, just uh, have a little chat about them. Okay, it's the first lot that I have on hand. I've, I've moved to a slightly different place uh, in the room for this video, so excuse uh, excuse me if you see me turning around and, and going out of shot. I've moved over to somewhere where I've got all the books piled up, ready to go. Um, so, the first lot, as I was about to say, came to me from uh, Reverie Booksellers. I don't know if you can see that that's their card now reverie booksellers used to be called the edgeware paperback center when i was a younger man i used to visit them um there was a bus that went from one side of crush it city right over the other side right straight through the middle um and it was called the metro star and on that route i used to go through the suburb of edgeware and right near a stop was the edgeware paperback center which was a, a big law to me and it was a former doctor's surgery which had been converted to a bookshop and every room was just lined with books and more books and more books and it, towards the uh the last near the last times that i've been there it's just been i've been unable to move through some of their corridors because of the so narrow because everything was just piled with books now the uh, woman who was running the uh edgeware payback center has handed over control of it to her son who has converted it to reverie booksellers and he's brought things into the 21st century by putting a uh, website up where you can uh, browse their stock and, and or indeed buy them. And that's what I've done. I had a, a quick trawl through all their new arrivals and their sci-fi and fantasy stock and picked out a few. Um, and I'll put the URL up if you want to, um, want to have a look yourself. Um, here it goes. Now it is, uh, I believe they do ship within New Zealand. I don't know if they ship internationally. You'll have to check the website. I, I just can't remember at this point. Anyway, first of all from them. Alphabet Squadron Star Wars. This is a series which I had on one of my uh, many wish lists for quite a while. I was waiting for them all to come out in these mass, mass market paperback formats. Um, kind of something appealed to the inner you know, Star Wars fan in me which seems to be growing again after many years. I'm not sure why. Um, Alphabet Squadron, fighter pilots against remnants of the Empire after the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, anyway, this is the first one. Um, and I found that they had the whole set at this Reverie Booksellers. And to my surprise, they were all in different formats. So this is the final one, I believe. Um, I'm holding it upside down. This is the final one, Victory's Price, and this is in a trade paperback. And the second one, here we go, Shadowfall, is actually in a hardcover. So someone was buying these as soon as they could afford them, or as soon as they came out. And So I've got a mismatch set. I'm not sure if I'm going to ever get around to reading them in the near future, but it's nice to know that something struck off my wish list. Also at Reverie, came across this, The Massacre of Mankind, as it says on the cover, this is the authorised sequel to War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Remember this got a bit of publicity when it came out about five or six years ago, or even more possibly, I think it was around 2017. Um, this is by Stephen Baxter, big name in science fiction back in the 80s and 90s. Um, I have no idea where he takes the story in this one. I imagine it involves tripods and plucky humans fighting against them. And the last one I got from Reverie was Peter F. Hamilton, Judas Unchained. Now about, I don't know, four or five years ago I got a second-hand copy of Pandora's Star, which is the first one in this sequence, and I was looking for one, a matching copy, uh, the size and cover design. Finally found it at Reverie. Um, I was a big fan of Peter F. Hamilton back in the 90s with his Night's Dawn uh, series. Uh, skipped some of the late the ones after that, including this series, the Commonwealth books. Um, started reading him again with the Salvation series, uh, which wound up I think last year. And uh, yeah, he's a he's a good author. He just 
perhaps goes a little overboard sometimes. Some things he's not a great writer of, but other things he can he can create a great world, great universe. Just the characters are sometimes a little off. So that is Peter F. Hamilton's Judas Unchained, part two of the Commonwealth saga. So that is the books from Reverie. I'll just quickly throw them back here. Um, excuse me while I uh, shove things into a box. Just don't want to fit. Now another uh, thing I am part of is the random book club done by the uh, bookshop in Wigtown. Uh, Sean Bithell, you may be uh, uh, familiar with, he's an author who writes uh, his memoirs, his diary style memoirs of working in the uh, largest bookshop in uh, Scotland, or one of the largest bookshops in the UK. He's put out uh, several uh, amusing memoirs about this since, and one of his uh, things to raise money for his shop when he was in hard times was to create the Random Book Club. Now this is a service he runs where you, uh, this may not even go into focus, uh, where you pay him uh, basically, I think it's £100 uh, a year, and he and his minions will uh, randomly select a book for you from his stocks and send it out to you. It's always a bit of a mystery what you're going to get and some of them are better than others of course. Now the last three I've got from him are uh, this one, The Red Prince, about one of the Habsburg uh, princes in Austro-Hungarian Empire, all that type of thing. History, I might read it one day but just not right away. After that was Alistair MacLean, River of Death, one of the 80s men's own adventure type thing, not really my type of cup of tea really. Um, but you know, and it's got an SRN6 hovercraft on the front which does intrigue me. Um, don't know if there's one actually in the story, I have no idea. And the last one that he sent me was One Night in Winter, a Scottish author's book. Uh, I know nothing about this book, just says it's uh, some type of trial and, uh, and world weary policeman and, and so on. I, I think this author Alan Massey is quite a big deal in Scotland, so I might give it a go one day. Okay, now we're up to more random stuff. This book I wanted to point out, The Mountain in the Sea. It's been getting a lot of good word of mouth over the last few months since it first came out. This is a, a UK edition, a, a soft cover, which is airport type uh, version. Um, I know a good friend who has just read this book, actually this copy, which I lent to him, and he uh, gives this book very high praise indeed. It's kind of a mixture of science fiction, near future, taking in a whole lot of things like uh, the nature of consciousness, uh, ecology, the environment, um, cyberpunk aspects, um, the nature of consciousness, like I said. Uh, it's about uh, people encountering possible uh, intelligent creatures in the sea, namely octopuses off the coast of Vietnam, I believe. There's a whole lot of aspects to the story, and everyone who reads this seems to be uh, uh, very enthusiastic about it. So I'll be reading that one soon, hopefully. Another one I've received uh, recently was this, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, Fat Totem in the Book Trade by Marius Kosiarski. Probably murdered that name. This is a memoir of a, a gentleman who's spent his whole life working around books and various uh, forms and manners. And this is basically his memo, his select stories of the book trade. Another one that interests me because of my long-standing in, uh, interest in Russia and the former Soviet Union. This one, Muppets in Moscow. This is supposed to be a, a light-hearted but serious look at um, a time in the following the fall of the Soviet Union uh, in the 1990s, I believe, when uh, the the producers of the uh, television series Sesame Street decided to create a Russian uh, version of their product production. And this is all the stresses and strains of the people who are involved um, creating that uh, production over there in Russia. Okay, onto the whole home stretch now. Uh, this is Reading the World by Anne Morgan. Got this in a sale from the local uh, E uh, retailer Mighty Ape. Probably, probably a bit different than what I was expecting. Uh, Anne Morgan did this uh, online um, blog where she should read a uh, book from a, a different country. I think it was 196 in total, and should report on it. 
Now, I was hoping this was going to be like a, a light-hearted look at, at that process uh, via her blog entries, but it turns out this book seems to be something a little more high-minded. It seems to be her using her tasks that she did to look more into what does it mean by a national writer, nationality or ethnicity, that type of thing. So I put that one on a bit on the back burner. I wasn't really interested in that type of angle right now. May you go back to it later. Okay, David McCloskey, Domestic Station. Now I'm a follower of the online uh, spy and thriller book um, uh, social network called Spyberry and this one gets high marks by all the members there. Uh, it's been out in the US edition for a couple of years now and it's just come out in this UK edition. Um, it's about the Arab Spring and the fallout in uh, Syria and some US agents that get caught up in it. It's actually one of the best spy books in the last decade or so. Um, I'm a sucker for that type of thing. Uh, may read it very soon. Okay, one or two left. Theory of Everything by Dan Schreiber. And Dan Schreiber is well known for his um, appearances on uh, uh, podcasts like No Such Thing as a Fish and all that type of lighthearted thing. And this is a kind of lighthearted look at uh, extreme beliefs and conspiracy theories and what have you. Um, looks like a lot of fun. I'll, I'll definitely be reading this, but maybe not right away. I've got so many other ones on the, on the go. And finally, Scale by Greg Egan. Now Greg Egan is one of the hardest of hard science fiction writers. Often when he writes a book you see he's written 600 pages of notes just to lay the foundation of, of what he's discussing in his stories. Now this one, Scale, posits a universe where there are several scales of reality or um, physical uh, matter and people can exist on each of these scales, they're just smaller and, and, and um, or larger. And it's a kind of a, a, a noir detective story based on uh, what would happen in this universe that he has, has um, thought up. And uh, I haven't read it, of course, uh, so I am just guessing as what will happen, but I imagine it involves lots of little people and lots of big people. Um, so that is Scale by Greg Egan. Okay, so I think that is almost there. Oh, we've got another pile here, sorry. And this is Life's Lottery by... Uh, uh, Kim Newman, sorry, I just forgot that then. Now this is a uh, adult choose your own adventure, pick a path, fighting fantasy, whatever you want to call them. Those books that were big in the uh, early 80s and became very popular um, and have seemed to have really disappeared, although there's been some attempts to revive them via electronic means. Um, this is basically you live an entire life and at the end of a section that you read you can go to page whatever in it if you want to do X and page whatever else, if you want to do Y. And there's also a kind of a, a an annotated section for uh, apparently for your US readers, which didn't get all the references in the uh, the book originally. This is a UK book and it, there was a project to take it to the US market and that Newman had to write up all these notes and that fell apart. So he's just added it to this new edition, well, recent edition of Life's Lottery. Now this one, Token Carmen's Trumpet, I only bought last week with a uh, handy gift token for the local bookshop Scorpio Books. Um, it was toss up between this and two or three other books and this one uh, found my favour. Now this is a history of ancient Egypt in uh, 100 objects. There's some really great photography in this book and diagrams and what have you. Uh, ancient Egypt is something that's fascinated me since I was a kid. I'm not a mad enthusiast on it but it's just nice to to dip into that world for a while and uh, these hundred objects or whatever type style books have been around for about a decade or so there's been radio programs there's been um, TV programs of a similar format they take an object and tell you all the history about it and as part of that you learn uh, knowledge about the, the larger picture so that is Tuchin Tarman's Trumpet and last but not least we have dear old Dan Deer, The 2000 AD Years, Volume 1. Now this isn't the uh, famous 1950s Dan Deer as drawn by Frank Hampson. Um, this is the revamped version which was published as part of the launch of the UK comet 2000 AD in the late 1970s. Now, in the early 1980s, 2000 AD was a large part of my life. I remember going to the shops after school and buying the latest copy. Of 
course we're always three months behind here in New Zealand but it, it really um, taught me a lot about storytelling about uh, morals about uh, right and wrong that type of thing when I was a, when I was a, uh, a young kid the stories were really strong and they're always fighting against things like racism and, and that type of thing in a, in a science fiction setting and um, one of the early things made for this was this uh, Dan Deere. He's completely revamped from the old 1950s version. There's not very much familiar about him if you know that one. Um, he's still fighting the Mekon. You can see him there, uh, the big headed fellow. Um, they tried to create a more of an action comic type thing in the 2000D version of Dan Deere. This is influenced by things like Star Wars and, and all that type of thing in the late 70s. Uh, I've never really read the whole run of them, I only had occasional ones when I collected back issues of 2000 AD. Um, be interested to see how it reads. Um, there is a volume 2 of this coming my way as well, or hopefully if the Postal Service works, and uh, that will complete the series for me. Okay, so that is it. That is the big book haul of March 2023. It's a terrible rainy, windy day outside here. I hope you haven't been picking up the sounds on the microphone. With rain and wind have been blown right against the window here. Um, what's coming next? I am reading Can I Have My Ball Back? That's Richard Herring's uh, memoir about his testicular cancer. Um, probably get that finished in the next couple of days. And I've just finished also Chasm City by uh, Alistair Reynolds, his second novel, I believe. Interesting, but not as good as I thought it could have been. Uh, we'll have a full review of that one pretty soon as well. Uh, so that's it. I uh, hope I haven't bored you to death with this uh, super-sized video. We'll see you next time. Thank you.